Hello everyone, in this video I've finally reached level 31, so I'll briefly go over elite skills as well as the path ahead for my character. So after exploring each race's starting zone and getting to around level 25, I decided at that point to start the personal story. Um, the personal story provides a fairly decent chunk of experience after completing each step, so one of the reasons that I prefer to wait for a little bit before starting um, is that you'll end up getting the same percentage for each step of the personal story, regardless of what level you play it at. So in my case, I was getting around 25% of a level from the very first parts of the personal story. So basically, what I did to get to level 31 was to complete the starting zone for my race, in this case the Norn starting area of Wayfarer Hills, um, and then I explored the starting zones of the other races, making sure to grab all the waypoints, vistas, and hero points from each of them. Uh, while I was exploring each of these zones, I would join in dynamic events that I encountered around me as I ventured through these areas. Um, after finishing my goals in each of these starting zones, uh, I finally started my personal story. While working on my personal story, I completed each step up until the next part that would put me in the next level zones, the 15 to 25 zones. Uh, in that case, uh, this was sending me to Diesa Plateau. Since I reached a point in my personal story that was directing me to these second tier zones, rather than continuing the story, I went back to exploration. Um, again, my goals in each of these zones was to get the waypoints, vistas, and hero points in each of these 15 to 25 zones. Um, these zones are the Diesa Plateau, uh, the Snowden Drifts, Brisbane Wildlands, and Kessex Hills. Uh, in my case, I was able to get to level 31 shortly after completing my exploration goals in Diesa Plateau and Snowden Drifts. And basically, once I had started my exploration of the Brisbane Wildlands, I quickly got enough experience to finish out level 31. So like I mentioned in my earlier videos, I have been sticking with using minions on my Necromancer. So for my elite skill, I chose the minion elite, the Flesh Golem. Um, the Flesh Golem is a strong, melee-oriented minion with a powerful stun ability. Elite skills are extremely powerful abilities that will often have very long cooldowns, so one thing to keep in mind while leveling and deciding which elite skill to use is to factor in the cooldown time as well as whether or not they provide some passive bonus to you. For example, some elite skills are Signets uh, that have both a passive and active effect, so while leveling those elite skills can sometimes be more appealing than a skill that has a 4 minute cooldown. So now that we have all of our ability slots unlocked and we've unlocked our first specialization slot, the next priority is going to be finishing out another second specialization so that we are ready for level 45. However, as you can tell, this won't be particularly difficult since at level 31 I'm already halfway through the blood magic specialization so I won't have any trouble by the time I do get to level 45 and my second specialization slot is available. Now that we've hit our major milestones in the early game, the plan from here on out is just to continue leveling efficiently. To that end, my plan is to continue to explore each zone that is level appropriate for me and continuing my personal story. However, now that we are level 30, we have opened up another option to us, and that is dungeons. At level 30, we have only one available to us, the Ascalonian Catacombs. However, from this point on, every 10 levels is going to open up a new dungeon to us. Dungeons are basically group events that take place inside an instance, similar to the story instances that you've experienced while playing the personal sword. Generally, they require four to five players, uh, and they will have two modes of play, story mode and exploration mode. At level 30, you'll only have the story mode available for Ascalonian Catacombs, but the exploration mode will unlock a few levels later at level 35. Uh, this pattern continues for each dungeon that you unlock throughout the game. And that is pretty much it for an introduction to Guild Wars 2. 
In this series we've covered the basics to the game and some ideas that you should keep in mind while leveling and planning ahead on your character. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something.